welcome to Brilliant Biology. Today we're diving into topic 5A2, chloroplasts and chlorophyll. By the end of this video, you should learn the overall reaction of photosynthesis, the structure of chloroplasts in relation to their role, the meaning of absorption spectrum and action spectrum, and how chromatography is used to separate chlorophyll pigments. Let's begin by looking at the reaction of photosynthesis. This is the overall reaction, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Carbon dioxide combines with water, and they react together with the help of light energy and chlorophyll to produce glucose and oxygen. But we need to understand what happens in slide more detail. So first, light energy is used to break the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen in the water molecules. Then the hydrogen molecules, which are released, combine with carbon dioxide to make glucose and the oxygen that's left over from the water molecules is released by itself as a waste product. Let's move on to the structure of chloroplasts. Firstly, every chloroplast is surrounded by an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The space in between the membranes is known as the chloroplast envelope. Inside, we have many of these structures that look like stacks of discs. These are membranes that are arranged in layers. Each stack is a granum, or grana for plural. The grana membranes are covered in particles, which is where the production of ATP is thought to occur. Each individual membrane disc is known as a thylakoid. This is where the green pigment chlorophyll is found. Next, we have these broad looking structures, which seem to connect different grana together. They are called lamellae. They act as a skeleton of the chloroplast and maintain distance between the grana so that they receive as much light as possible. Lastly, we have the stroma, which is the matrix that surrounds the grana. It contains all the enzymes needed for photosynthesis and the production of glucose. Let's talk about chlorophyll. We all know that chlorophyll is a light capturing photosynthetic pigment. But actually, you'd be surprised to hear that chlorophyll is not a single pigment. Instead, it is a mixture of pigments. These include chlorophyll A, which is blue-green, chlorophyll B, which is yellow-green, carotenoids, which are orange and yellow, and pheophatin, a gray pigment that is the breakdown of the other pigments. Now, chlorophyll A is found in all photosynthesizing plants and it is found in the highest quantity. That means that there's more chlorophyll A than any other pigments. But why does chlorophyll need all these pigments? Each pigment absorbs light from a different area of the light spectrum. So having a variety enables the plant to use most of the light falling on it. The absorption spectrum is a graph which compares the amount of light absorbed by a pigment against the wavelength of light. So it tells us which light wavelengths are absorbed by which pigments. From this emerge the action spectrum. The action spectrum compares the rate of photosynthesis to the exposure to different wavelengths of light. If we combine the action spectrum and the absorption spectrum, we can see that they're almost identical, and this proves to us that having different pigments makes a larger amount of light available, which acts as an advantage. We can use chromatography to separate the different pigments that are found in chlorophyll. To do this, first grind up the leaves of propanon, then filter them, then draw a baseline on the chromatography paper using pencil, then place a spot of the mixture on the origin, and lastly, place the paper in a beaker with a solvent. Make sure that the solvent is below the baseline and that the setup is as shown on the picture. Here's an image of the separated pigments. We can use it to calculate the RF value. Remember that the RF value is the ratio of the distance traveled by a pigment compared to the distance traveled by a solvent. Here's the equation. RF values are always between zero and one. I like to think of it as one means it's moved 100% of the way, and zero means it hasn't moved at all. In this case, for example, carotene looks to be around 0.9 because it's moved about 90% of the way that the solvent has moved. Lastly, let's introduce the idea of photosystems. 
We have photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 is a combination of pigments that absorb lights with wavelength 700 nanometers, and photosystem 2 is a combination of pigments that absorbs light with wavelength 680 nanometers. But more to this in the next topic. And that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've made a link in the description box with flashcards which you can use to practice this topic and they're completely free. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.